In this video, we're going to show you how easy it is to set up and run your files using the Rich Auto controller. So after securing our workpiece at the table, we're going to go ahead and insert a V-bit here. In our design software, we set the XY0 point as the lower left-hand corner. So now it's just time to tell the machine where the lower left-hand corner is of our workpiece. So by using the controller and jogging the machine to that point, we'll hit the XY0 button on the control, and that allows us to set that as the origin position. With the Rich Auto controller, we have the ability to set up nine different origins. We can tell which one we're in by simply looking at the left-hand column. For this, you'll see 1X, 1Y, 1Z. That indicates we're in the first set of origins. You can switch origin points at any time by hitting the menu button and then the designated number. So for this instance, we're gonna hit menu, two, and let go at the same time and switch over to our second set of origins. A good tech tip here is to use the multiple origins to your advantage. Save your XY0 for any workpiece twice. For example, set your XY0 in the first set and then switch over to the second and save it again. This will ensure if you ever lose it for any reason, you always have a backup. Now we can remove the V-bit and the collet as we were just using it for our setup. Another tech tip here, when removing the collet, make sure it snaps out of location and the new one should snap in place to the bottom of the collet nut before threading it up into the spindle. At this point, we can go ahead and insert our bit that we're gonna be using for this project in this case, a half inch core box bit, and then using our wrenches, we can lock it in place. Now that our XY0 has been set in our lower left hand corner, we can tighten down that last hold down clamp. Using the touch off puck supplied with the machine, we can set our Z0. Simply placing it on top of the material and pressing the tool set button allows the spindle to move in the negative direction until contact is made. The placement of the puck, either on the surface of your material or at the base, is determined by your selection and your design software. At this point, your C0 will have been set. At any time, you can hit the OK button on the control and the machine will return to its origin point. The last thing to do is to set our spindle RPM. In this case, we're gonna turn it to about 17,000 RPM. With the flash drive inserted, we can hit the Run Pulse Delete button on our control this will bring up a screen asking us where we would like to select our file from. In this case, we can hit OK. We will then get a screen displaying all of the visible files. Using our up and down arrows, we can scroll through those. Once we have found our file, we simply hit the OK button to select it. From the work parameter screen, you will see work speed, fast speed, and speed scale. Work speed can be ignored as the controller is taking the feed rate from your software. Fast speed is simply the shuttle speed, or the rate at which the machine moves between cutting locations. We recommend leaving these at factory settings. Speed scale is a percentage of the set feed rate from your software. This allows you to adjust it in 10% increments. Hitting the OK button one more time will give you a three second countdown before the spindle fires up to operating RPM and the job is off and running. When your file is finished running, the spindle will shut down and the Z will retract to its safe height position. We hope you enjoyed this video. Remember, for more information, you can always refer to your Axiom user manual or simply visit us at axiomprecision.com.